So here is my latest update to the Honda Monkey. It's the Beeline Moto navigation app. Just going to give you a quick overview um, and a quick test to see how we get on with it. The Beeline Moto works in conjunction with an app on your mobile and gives simple navigation prompts through the display unit. The system costs £149 uh, and it comes with all the kit required to get riding straight away. Within the box you get the Beeline Moto display unit, a universal mount with different sized rubber bands to install pretty much anywhere on the bike, a GoPro style mount with adhesive and a charging station. Universal mount, I found it could be pretty much mounted anywhere and can be installed and removed in seconds through a twist and click method. The unit's not a conventional GPS device. All routes and settings are changed through the Beeline app. The app's really easy to navigate through and here is a quick overview of how to plan a route. Navigating with the Beeline app is really easy and straightforward. Just click on the app. I believe it's uh, available on iOS and Android. You'll see on the bottom bar you've got three kind of key areas. You've got Navigate, which is your, the screen up at the moment, which will allow you to put in your points um, to wherever you want to go, to your destination and waypoints. You've got a Journeys icon. If I open that, you'll see that there's some previous rides on there. You can save these, share them to social media. It'll show you your average speed, distance and time. You've also got a settings icon. In there you can change some of the parameters, whether you want it in kilometres, miles, yards, feet, all that kind of stuff along with your account settings. But for today, just want to look at the navigate. If you click on the where to bar, in there you can either put in a postcode or you can just pinch um, on the map and it'll set that as the destination. I'm just going to click on the search bar and I've got some addresses saved in there. You'll see here that a route's already just been planned. It's in route mode as it is currently. If I uncheck the route mode, you'll see it's got line of sight. That's quite a useful parameter to have if you want to have a bit of an adventure and just kind of find your way to your destination point or if you're off-road and you just want to know uh, where your end destination is. But I'm going to click it back into route mode. You'll see here that now a route has been planned. If you want to add waypoints, you can either add it as an address into the search bar again, or you can just click on the map and add a further point. You'll see there that the old destination has now changed to orange and the new destination is now green. Again, you can just add more addresses in or pinch on the map to add those or delete them. Really easy. Again, just gonna delete. So now I've got a route set in there. I've got various parameters in the top right you can clear the route, you can reverse it, you've got route options in there, and you can also import GPX files if you've got routes that you want to input into here. So if I click on the route options, you can avoid highways, tolls, ferries. Just click on what you want, and then the map will recalculate based on those settings. Now I've got my route plan, you'll see in the bottom right, it'll, if there's a little go icon, it says it's 5.7 miles. As soon as I press that, It'll then go to my head unit, and now I should have turn-by-turn -turn navigation to my destination. So let's give it a trial in real life and see how it gets on. So I've now got a route program, just to have a quick test. Once you've got the route set up, you can scroll through these buttons through settings, battery power, different types of trip information, destination, and also miles per hour. I'm just going to put it back onto the turn-by-turn -turn directions and let's give it a try. So the reason I opted for the Beeline navigation system is I had a whacking great mobile phone holder. It's only a small bike and it's aesthetically pleasing. Um, the little unit, it clicks on and off nice and easily. So it's something if you've got a Grom, a scooter or a small bike like a monkey, it just works perfectly. Just looking at through the specifications, the unit itself is IP67 rated, so it's not going to have any problems with dust, rain, I believe it's vibration tested as well. And on the Beeline app, it says that uh, the application itself and the map is globally ready outside the box. I'll put a link to it on the description so you can check to see uh, what's available in your areas. I've only used this probably around three times but it's really simple to use as you can see here it's just telling me using the arrow as it gets close to the dot that I need to turn left now straight ahead 
2.2 of a mile and if you look at the dot on the bottom left it's now telling me at that point I need to turn left it's one of the things I like about the system is that it's so simple you spend less time looking down more time enjoying your riding so again I'm coming up to a set of traffic lights and it's telling me to turn left the bar at the top is showing me the distance I've got to go to my destination and will move in time to show me uh, what distance I'm covering you can see now it's telling me at uh, the roundabout icon in the middle that I'll be taking the second exit off and again I'll be following the V and the dot which will turn and show me where I need to go a couple of things that I think could be improved just from using this a few times is the map itself is it seems to use Google Maps but there's no traffic updates on there it's not a deal breaker for me because I don't really get much traffic on the bike but if you were in a city and you were using it every day it'd be useful to have some form of traffic data just so that you can pre-plan your routes I mean I used to spend lots of time in London uh, carving around on scooters and if I saw there's a lot of traffic around the Blackwall Tunnel, I'll just take somewhere else. So perhaps it's something for a firmware update. Another point that might be a deal breaker for some people is that as yet I don't think it has Bluetooth connectivity with motorbike headsets to give you turn-by-turn -turn directions. Again, if that's something you're looking for, perhaps this isn't for you. But for me, I don't have one of those uh, Bluetooth connections in the uh, helmet, so it's, it's, it's fine for me. For what I've been using it for, it's been fantastic. The resolution of the screen in all types of sun, it's quite sunny today and uh, a couple of days ago I had sun behind and the screen can be seen really well. It's also got on the uh, settings button a uh, switch for lights as well, so you can put the lights on and you can see it perfectly in the dark as well. See how it gets on with the roundabout. Yeah, telling me third, take the third exit, which is correct. And you'll see the little dot is literally coming behind me, which is where I'm going to be going. Okay, I'm going to follow the arrow around. It's been quite accurate, bearing in mind it's linked to my phone, so I'll be using the phone GPS and information. Okay, you can see as I turn around, you'll see the uh, arrow turns around with it. I've not had any faults so far. And if you do take a wrong turning, it will auto-recalculate for you and bring you back onto track. Okay, we're on the last section back. So far, it's not had any problems, it's picking up the turnings. It's also acting quite quickly, there doesn't seem to be much lag. That was one of the things that I was a bit worried, thinking that uh, it's connected to the phone. If there's any connection issues, I might end up missing an exit, but that hasn't happened. Another positive about it is how small it is. Once you've parked up somewhere, you just twist and click, you can put the thing in your pocket, you don't really have to worry about it. I didn't want a, a separate GPS unit, one because the bike's not big enough and, and secondly because it's just another thing that I've got to pack away with me. So for ease of use it ticks all the boxes. Like I say, the only couple of negatives, well they're not negatives, they're just things that I think can be improved in a firmware update, is to allow for the traffic and to potentially put turn by turn navigation through the headset through Bluetooth put those couple of things on it I think it will be a no-brainer especially at the price point that it's coming in £149 with everything you need the mounts everything included you know it's far cheaper and uh, you know bearing in mind the cost of a mobile phone it's going to save you a fortune rather than having that drop off or get damaged on the bike so from my initial review I haven't done much on it I'll probably do another review in about six months time yeah really pleased with it looks good on the bike does the job and for the value for money I think it's a 
would make a good Christmas present for someone. I'm not sure if there's any Black Friday deals, I don't think there is. Uh, but if you know any riders, it could be something to look forward to.